Everyone's waiting for Santa. And the mug. Hey everyone, um, this is 1969, my 12 favorite albums from 69, based upon what I still have in my collection, but I had a number of different ones from 69. This all started, this whole countdown, you know, as we go up years, Final Richie started it, and I've been waiting for him to get 1969 done, I've just been sitting here patiently waiting, and though, well, you know what? Let's just move on. So, Final Richie, I'm, I'm sorry. I jumped. I jumped you. So, there you go. Uh, I, 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 I know he'll forgive me. But 669. What a year. What a number, huh? 69. Yeah. Uh, a lot went on. Oh, my God. Music was changing. And so, I did 12. I have 10. We're going to have a couple honorable mentions, though. And the first one. So we're just going to jump into this thing, right? I don't have the cover anymore. That's the Sacred Mushroom. Is that neat? And we'll get that nice and close. There. The Sacred Mushroom. And I have that. It's right here. This is a reissue. This came out a couple years ago. There's actually none for sale on Discogs right now. Uh, from Shake It Records in Cincinnati. They, they put this out. Shake It Records. Great great record store in Cincinnati. I used to, when I had that area, loved going to Shake It Records. Bought a lot of stuff there. With a Sacred Mushroom, great psych. I mean, really, really, really good psych. An original of the Sacred Mushroom, mid-level, $200. Top, $500. This reissue, $19. Just no one's selling it. Actually, more want it than have it, according to Discogs. And if you can find it, it is just phenomenal. It's, 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 I'm not an expert on psych, but this would be one of my favorite. Absolute favorite. I mean, song after song is so good. So, Sacred Mushroom, we're going to go with that. Number 12. Then number... 11 is Johnny Winter, Second Winter. And this, oh my goodness. There he is. There's Johnny. There's his brother Edgar. Look at Edgar's short hair. Can you believe it? Look at Edgar. Wow. What's with that? That that short hair didn't last long. Uh, but the Winter Brothers played on this. This has Johnny Be Good. And it has Highway 61 Revisited, which his version of Highway 61 Revisited is the definitive version as far as I'm concerned. My God, he made that sound good. Great guitarist out of Texas. Um, him and his brother, of course, his brother went on to do Frankenstein, which is what a good song. But really, this is just one of his best albums, in my opinion. Came out in 1969, so we'll give that number 11. Number 10, Jeff Will Tall, this was. They had two albums out that year, but this is the one that I'm going to pick. This is their blues albums. Just they have Ab Ab Abramson, uh, Mick Abramson was in there, and he loved the blues, and he was a very good blues player. And so this is the most bluesy Jethro Tall album. This, there's, there's, there's no kind of prog. Yes, there's flute and that going on, but it just has such a cool blues feel to it. I love this album. It is totally different than their catalog. Because Mick Abramson left after this and um, was in Bloodwind Pig, which kind of carried on, but even they began to morph. But uh, you know, I put this num number 10. Jethro Tall is a favorite group. And this is just one of, in their catalog, this is one of my favorite albums that they put out. I just, that blues feel. So if you like blues, I mean, not, this isn't like Edgar Winter Blues, okay? It's still a little, it's English blues, a little different. A little, you know, the flute's in there, but very good album. Very good album. 
then that would be 10. So we're going to go down to nine now. And this was a wonderful album. Chicago Transit Authority. The very first album by Chicago. Of course, Transit Authority, then it gets lawsuits. They had to just change it to Chicago. Who starts their, who does, who does their very first album and decides to do it into a two album set? It smokes. Terry Cath, or guitarist. Jimi Hendrix said is the best guitarist alive and he is really really good but it's the horns and everything that goes on and, and what is on this album beginnings is on here it's only just beginning what a, an amazing song there is um question 68 and 60 uh 67 68 that's that's a wonderful free form guitar I'm 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 a man is on here this just a wonderful album and early Chicago is funky. Later Chicago is sappy, as far as I'm concerned. I was I was good with Chicago up till after six. I'll go up to eight, okay? But up to six, they had the horns, they had the funk, uh, less of the of the slow stuff, and more just punched at you. This thing has punch, probably. Uh, Chicago 6 is an absolute favorite album because it was my first Chicago album, so it's sentimental. But this thing, this, this thing's heat. Excellent, excellent album worth having. Brings us down to number 8. MC5. Kick out the jams. This album is not for everybody. But for those of you that have a love of punk, this is important. These guys came out, came out of Motor City and tore it up. It is just, it's incinerary. It is just, I mean, God, it's just incredible what they what they bring out of their instruments. You know, Ramblin' Rose, kick out the jams. I mean, my goodness, Motor City's burning. Um, Rocket Reducer, hey, hey, gads. Rob Tyner on lead vocals. Wayne Kramer, uh, on, on the guitar you know it's one of those groups that kind of skyrocketed and burned out quick this is incinerary just and it is the beginning of a whole new movement really coming out you know the garage rock now is changing into this really hard hitting stuff mc5 important important album okay number seven and you know i was trying to decide if Led Zeppelin was going to make it or not. But it did. And so Led Zeppelin won. Do you put on one? Do you put on two? Do you put on them both? Uh, we'll put on one. I mean, it's six dozen, one half dozen of the other, right? But it started something totally new. And so 69 was this turning point, this, this tipping point where we brought in heavy. In fact, I think this in Black Sabbath's first. I don't have Black Sabbath's first album, but that, you know, talk about heavy. But this, you know, really, let's face it, Good Times, Bad Times is on here. You Shook Me, Dazed and Confused, Communication Breakdown. I mean, it just, it soared, it rocked. It was so different, so new. Robert Plant, it just looks like, looks like a little kid. His vocals were incredible. Bonham's drumming. What can you say about his drumming? John Paul Jones could play keys, could play bass. Uh, I just always have marveled at his virtuosity on what he could do. Just such a great album. You know, one of those, well, you need to have Zeppelin in your collection. And this is one that you should. That Zeppelin too, though, I mean, just as wonderful. Just as wonderful. Then, I believe it's seven, number six. The Stooges. This is my nice. I've been, I've been nice, and you know, as I brought back the collection, I've gotten a number of originals, which has been good. Not the cheapest thing in the world, but it's good. Like MC5, they changed the face of music. They began to say, things are changing now, and we're taking over. Again, <laughs> no one cared. No one cared, but come out of Detroit again. I mean, this has, I want to be your dog. Come on. I Want to Be Your Dog is one of those top singles of all time. My God, that is so, there's such a groove in that thing. I mean, 
It's the groove, baby. It, it has it. No fun is on here. 1969. I is it all just incredibly great? No, there's some stuff that can and whatever. But when this is good, it is phenomenal. It is hard to beat. Iggy came out. This, I mean, this group was great. And, you know, they, they were learning. Um, you know, Ron Ashton, his guitar playing got better as he went. Uh, yeah, at the third album, though, everything was getting sloppy, but that was more drugs and stuff. But what a great album. Such an important album. Uh, yeah, again, if for those, especially anybody interested in punk, man, this is, this is it. This is it. This gets it going. Speaking of punk, the godfathers of, you know, Stooges, but other groups had a huge impact. And this... This, this, this is one of them. The Velvet Underground. This is their self-titled, The Velvet Underground. It's the third album. This is the first one about John Cale. This allowed Lou Reed to do what he wanted to do. And, you know, make the music that he really, really wanted to make. It, just an incredibly good album. Doug Yule comes in. And Doug Yule sounded similar to Lou Reed. He was an acolyte of Lou Reed. This is hits. Lou Reed wanted to write hits. That was his thing. I want hits. I mean, he worked, you know, with the Brill Building, you know, making, he had to hit the ostrich. He knew how to write pop tunes. And this has it. it it's, there's, there's fast and there's slow. We got Candy Says. There's Pale Blue Eyes. Jesus. Such a wonderful song. Jesus. I mean, it's gorgeous, especially the harmonies. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm set free, beginning to see the light. It is just, it's packed. This this is so good. This is my favorite Velvet Underground album. I love them all. I mean, believe me, I think every Velvet Underground, those first four albums are, are just some of the very best albums ever made. Nobody cared. And it's too bad on this one because it really had hits. But by now, they'd pissed everybody off. Their first two albums were just so out there. And I think people just go, oh, Velvet Underground, there is no way I'm touching that group. And let's face it, Lou Reed can be pissy. Okay? I mean, he's, he's not Mr. Jovial there. So, but what, what a wonderful album. If, if I would say, if you'd never bought Velvet Underground and you want to try Velvet Underground, you buy this, the third album, the self-titled Velvet Underground. I, you're, you're, you're not going to go wrong with it. I, I really think you would get that and you're going to go, wow, that guy could really write some songs. Wonderful stuff. Okay, number four. Let's talk about a thing of beauty. And that is Nick Drake. This is my favorite Nick Drake, Five Leaves Left. And the reason why it's my favorite is there's extra instrumentation. He sounds happier. It's such a such a rough life. So depressed. So, so such an introvert. I, the last person in the world that should be in the music industry. The last. And yet he had so much talent. So he was kind of pushed in there. But it killed him. Uh, this this. Such beautiful, the cello songs on here, River Man, Time Has Told Me, and just beautiful, Richard Thompson's on electric guitar on that one, Fruit Tree, uh, I, it is just, this is gorgeous, uh, The Thoughts of Mary Jane, wow, and, and, you know, and it's more than just his guitar and him sounding lonely, there's some horns, there's some strings, incredibly good album. Of all Nick Drake's, this is the one that I, you know, went and had to make sure I had. I had a wonderful box set, but I saved all my vinyl because he's such an important. I love this man. But great album that one is. And we come down to number three. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, my God. First off, world's best album cover jacket. The best. I mean, I've stared and stared at this. You see these people and they're the heads in here. It looks like a lion, but it's not a lion. It's so much more. This is such a cool jacket. And 
Look at that. But it has waiting evil waves on here. That's Cat. Here, Cat. Uh, he likes us too. Jingo is on here. Jingo, Jingo Bob. No, man. You just sit there. I know you want to be on camera. I'm sorry. Uh, this brought the Latin into rock. My goodness. You know, well, they, you know, obviously they're at Woodstock. And we go, who the hell is that? And then they put out their album. Wow. Such a masterpiece. Uh, you know, those first four Santana albums, to me, are just, are, are the greatest. Because it is about the rhythms, the percussion that they put in, uh, the congas. And, and, I mean, it just, it takes you into this trance. And it, it just, it puts you into a different place. I can see how people, you know, drop an after and go, wow, oh man, these guys are great. So pretty amazing. Just a great, great album. I mean... And the best cover. Well, okay, Cat. All right, we're down to two. Cat didn't want to miss out on that one. Here we go. Number two, Sly Stone Stand. Again, let's bring the funk, baby. Bring the funk, and let's make this thing happen. Eh, don't want to. Don't want to lose that. You know, Woodstock, and they played. This has stand on here. I want to take you higher every day, people. You can make it if you try. Four, four huge, huge hits. Don't call me nigger, Whitey. Such a great song. Sing a simple song. Oh, let's make it five. Sly Stone's greatest hits album. Half of it's from this album, Stand. It is, it's just, this, this album blows me away every time I listen to it. It's fresh, it's exciting, the music they put out, and they brought the funk. Funk was here, and they were showing what can be done with it. Such an incredible thing, Sly Stone, Stand. And the final one, Funk, right? Talking funk. Then you've got to have Bitches Brew. Man, Miles Davis. Oh, he's been with Betty. With uh, he married Betty. You know Betty Davis, and she taught him about funk, and they brought it on this album. This is one of my all-time favorite albums. You know, Kind of Blue is still my favorite Davis album, but I'm telling you, this is right there with it. And they're such, they're, they're so opposite. And, and this can be noise. This this has all kinds of crap going on when you listen to it. But listen to the drums. Listen to the bass. Listen to what's going down that's pushing the group forward. There was no planning. There was no nothing when they made this album. It was just like, all right, here's Here's what we're doing. Just let it rip. And they let it rip, and it came out wonderful. You had the, the electric guitar was now in there prominent um, from McLaughlin. You know, the, the, the electric piano. It, it was just a master course of showing what can be done. Jazz changed. Fusion coming your way. But this is funk. This is so funky i mean in, in, my, in my car man i just man i when anything from bitches brew comes out it just crank I, I just crank that and thank god some of these songs are like 20 minutes long because i don't want them to end the, i mean i just never never tire of it so amazing bring the funk baby bring me bitches brew here we go 1969 that's that's my picks uh just albums that totally make me happy but they mean something they change the landscape of music think things were starting to really change and they they they, they, they were part of it so cats just he's happy i'm glad he could be here so you guys could see him and uh you want to say goodbye cat of course not he has to be on my lap thanks everyone for watching i really appreciate it see you sunday bye